Hello and welcome to Launchtime Politics. I am Kaya Ryukikulu. On the news this hour, the People's Democratic Party, PDP, has increased the cost of nomination forms for governorship election by 15 million naira, and that will take effect from Bayelsa and Kogi elections. And the APC has condemned the elections in Bochi and Edo State Houses of Assembly. Also on the program, President Muhammad Buhari gives directive to the National Economic Council after its inauguration on areas of priorities of his government. Welcome everyone to the program. Well, let's get started this noon with what may be described as the policy direction of the Buhari government on the economy, which was clearly stated yesterday when the president inaugurated the National Economic Council with a charge on the council to focus on security, agriculture, health and economic development. The presidential villa has been a beehive of activities for the past days. And on this Friday, let's find out what the biggest stories are from the seat of power after what has been a marching order on the economy from the president. We have our correspondent Ibrahim Adra joining us live. Hello, Ibrahim. Well, Millicent, uh, yesterday, like you rightly pointed out, the president inaugurated the National Economic Council. And at that event, both speakers, that is the President and Vice President, uh, Professor Emil Shibaju, did stress the importance of this body to the well-being of the nation's economy and by extension the country at large. Specifically, the President requested that the, the, the Council focus on particular areas uh, of importance are the areas of security and those of the education. Now, in terms of security, even at the end of the, uh, the council meeting presided over by Vice President Yamoshi Bajo, they focused on security, but expectedly at the end of that meeting, not much was divulged uh, in terms of what strategy uh, they are adopting to tackle the insecurity of the country. Suffice it to say that the National Security Advisor briefed the council on all aspects of the security challenges facing the country, be it uh, ban armed banditry, armed robbery, pipeline vandalism, or the Boko Haram insurgency. Uh, the police also came up with what it thought would help uh, go along. And that includes the uh, highway patrols as well as camera being mounted, uh, including CCTV in major cities across the country. But the president was very particular about education, uh, I must tell you, uh, Millicent. He, he did say that he needs the state government to also come on board in that respect, quoting relevant sections of the Constitution that made the first nine years of a child's education mandatory and compulsory and free for all children in the country, saying that for any government to fail in delivering on this would also be aiding and abetting what he described as a crime for parents not to put their children in school. So he hammered on this and called on the state governments to also go ahead and grow the internally generated revenue as well as grow their agricultural output. Now, it's a clear indication that the federal government won't be able to do this alone, and so it's calling on the state government to come on board to see how they can all work together to deliver on their promises to the masses. Now, as far as what is going to happen today, uh, everyone is at his desk, perhaps catching up on paperwork, I would imagine. Usually, state visits are not announced ahead, especially unless, of course, if you're expecting visiting heads of state or other such dignitaries but visits within they they they, they usually uh, wouldn't want to divorce that so we might just see someone walk in here for a meeting which are usually private but of course we'll be letting you know on that uh coyote basically now that's the much we have going on for now uh, we're keeping our fingers crossed right here in the villa to bring your update as soon as it breaks of course let's not forget the famous al Majri story that we broke yesterday uh, the National Security Advisor insisting that the time has come to deal with that issue squarely, including proscription, if that uh, becomes very necessary. He did say it was a menace that has to be dealt with. 
Otherwise, we risk raising urchins on the streets who turn on the populace, uh, if not well taken care of. So he insisted that they are looking at the possibility of prescribing a Marjorie system of education in the country. That was a big story, and that's been fine, as we reported yesterday. Right. Uh, Coyote, for now, sir. All right, thank you very much, Ibrahim Adra, our State House correspondent who joins us live from the presidential villa in Abuja. Well, let's take you back to that inaugural address at the State House Council Chambers in Abuja, where President Muhammadu Buhari was speaking uh, to the National Economic Council just to sort of set an agenda. Don't forget the council is headed by the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshimbajo, with the 36 state governors as members. Others that were present at the event include the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, the Governor of the Central Bank, among others. Let's uh, get this report from our correspondent, Ibrahim Adra. We'll bring you that report much later. But staying with the National Economic Council meeting, the federal government, as Ibrahim said, is considering abolishing the al system of education in the north. The National Security Advisor, Mr. Babagana Monguno, gave the hints while clarifying his earlier statement regarding the prescription of some groups. The NSA says, in the light of the president's directive, that governments at all levels must ensure free and compulsory education, the government will have to stop the al system. Ultimately, government will have to proscribe this almagiri phenomenon because we cannot continue to have urchins, street children roaming around only for them in a couple of years or decades to become a problem to society. We, we are not saying that they are going to be contained in a manner that, you know, I'm sure you, you think maybe we might want to do something that is harmful to them. No, what we want to do is to work with the state governments to enforce the policy of education for every child. It is every child's right, his entitlement, for as long as he's a Nigerian. We don't start thinking short, mid and long term to overcome this problem. And like I told you earlier on, to overcome this problem, you require a collective effort. You can't carry this load and drop it on top of the government. Even government itself should not act as a one-legged tripod. It has to be three-legged. The executive cannot be the one carrying all the problem. It has to work with the judiciary and the legislature. But that in itself is not enough. You need to mobilize the rest of society. And that rest of society, you start mobilizing them 20 years to the time that you need them. So you need to deal with the issue of these children, these al Regardless of how people feel about it, we must work in sync with you know, the rest of the international community.